text to image synthesis. So you may not be familiar with this term, but I guarantee you that you have most likely come across it unknowingly on the internet. Maybe from a Twitter post, r slash wow dude on reddit, or even NFT marketplaces. How can these things look so surreal, realistic, and how are they all generated from just plain text? This machine learning magic is often categorized as text-driven image generation AI. But what kinds of AI are there? Where can I find them? And how are they different, you may ask? Well, you will be able to find out the answers to these questions in this video. I'll be covering all if not most of the modern text-to-image AIs and making this video almost like a viewing fest. So even if you don't understand what I'll be explaining later, it's totally alright. Just sit back, relax, and prepare yourself for an experience of the most beautiful page in the realm of AI research. Welcome to the world of AI-generated art. AI research in the early 2000s has already been sprouting out image generation left and right, but it was only until the publication of Deep Dream that the results from an AI was then considered art. And the reason that it was considered art was probably because of its eerily results, highly disturbing while mildly intriguing. And then there's style transfer where the AI extracts the style of an image and transfer it onto another. Style transfer is a design that's completely different to Deep Dream and made its presence from some genuinely stunning work in the recent time. But back when it was published in 2016, it was only like a cool little trick that looked nice on technical papers. And then there was this thing called GAN published in 2014. This approach in generating images have shown a lot of success, specifically with Stalgen in 2018, 2019, and 2021. Fake faces, fake cars, fake animals, you name it, nothing is impossible to generate for GANs, and they can look very realistic. I want you to remember this GAN thingy, because I think it is exceptional, and I'll talk about it again later. Hmm. You know, if you pronounce gen in a very hard tone, like gen, it's basically saying f in Chinese. Okay, so now you're informed of this random fact that you'll remember for your whole life while also remembering this thing called a gen. We can now move on to the key moment that changed everything. The notion of AI taking over human's jobs was merely a notion in science fiction. It was not until the release of Dolly E and Clip by OpenAI on January 5th, 2021, we got a taste of this dark future. Dolly E showed to the world that generating illustrations is as simple as giving a verbal description of the image. An illustration of a Pikachu in a cape playing a guitar. A cell phone case with an image of a blue carrot. The limit is literally your imagination, and it does not stop here. The moment that changed everything is not how well Dolly E generates everything realistically, but instead the ability to understand the text to make those images in the first place. This ability to connect the ideas inside text and images was only made possible by Clip. What Clip essentially does is that it rates the text description against the image by how well it describes the image. Clip learned how to do this through multi-model learning from the numerous pairs of text and image in its training stage. So in Dolly E, Clip basically rates how close the current generated image is to the input text given from the user. And it is this iterative process from noise that slowly creates details in the process, to then create an image that matches or at least attempt to match the given description. For all the AIs that I'll be mentioning in the rest of this video roughly follows this clip with some sort of generator paradigm. While we're at it, these three are the most popular generator or generative approaches. 
While they can still vary individually, this is how they generally look like. Gan is the one that I've mentioned earlier. VAE is the one that Dolly E uses, more specifically VQVAE, and the fusion models. They're like this new cool thing in the AI world that only became popular very recently, you'll see soon. With this VQVAE and clip relationship, people started experimenting with various different generative models and putting them together with clip. Most notably, Catherine Crossan was the first to pioneer this by creating VQGAN plus clip, made on a Google Colab notebook, which is a place you can run codes online. VQGAN plus clip itself was a success. People were getting cool results that they would have never imagined. Like literally never imagined. And prompt engineering became a crucial step to get cool results. Because mentioning an art style in the text prompt will largely affect the direction of the general generation the AI has. This gave birth to the Unreal Engine trick, whereby adding this phrase at the end of your text prompt, anything that VQGAN plus clip generates would then become extremely realistic, especially the lighting. However, there is just one slight issue. The results aren't ideal most of the time, so people started tuning, fixing the notebook by themselves, uploading their version of notebook, and sharing it with everyone else. In this process, countless notebooks with modifications would flood the internet, but at the same time creating this new relationship between AI art and collab notebooks. So when someone comes across a good generated art, instead of asking which AI, people would ask notebook instead. The combination of clip with other generative models were not left behind either. Clip plus Big N became the big sleep. Clip plus Siren became Deep Days. While I would say both weren't as impressive as VQ Gan plus Clip and with a very small resolution, they do however produce some really fascinating results by themselves. Just to show a few examples here. By May of 2021, the atmosphere starts to change a little bit in the realm of AI. GAN, which used to dominate in AI fields that require generating images, has finally met its maker, the fusion. GAN is a technique that in essence is an artist and a critique going off at each other each time the artist paints something. Artist aims to paint as close as the target, while the critique tells the artist how badly they've drawn against the target. This toxic work relationship has finally been beaten by Diffusion, where it learns how to denoise an image in a step-by-step -step process. BQ GAN plus Clip is probably the last place we saw the use of GAN in generative art, thanks to OpenAI's guided Diffusion published in May of 2021. After Catherine Crossan's combination of Clip and guided Diffusion, AI generative art it was never the same again. Clip plus guided diffusion equals clip diffusion. Clip diffusion began its rise the same way how VQGAN plus clip grew initially. Google's Colab notebooks. When the 256 unconditional ImageNet and the 512 class conditional ImageNet diffusion model were made, people started editing these notebooks, and more and more beautifully created pieces were produced and shared on the internet day in and day out. With this huge amount of notebooks floating around the internet, some night went out of the way to collect and modify Clip Diffusion's 512 model and successfully made it easier for most people to use and get good results. This gave birth to this code diffusion, one of the most popular open source AI generative art variations to exist on the internet. This code diffusion, currently now version 5.2, offers an immense amount of control in its customization. Not only does it have the ability to generate videos, but also has the ability to control how the videos are being generated with its super good latent control, and mostly implemented by Gandamu. Video results like 2D animation works beautifully, 3D animation works smoothly and realistically, all because there is this group of great developers constantly improving Disco Diffusion and what it has to offer for free, which is just amazing. Due to the complex nature of making AI generative art, studies on prompt engineering started to emerge on the internet. In order to generate a good result, the text prompt that is used for the AI should include modifiers at the end. 
This is essentially telling the AI that you want a specific art style to be included in the piece, so the AI would generate the image or video in the art style that you desire. I mean, if you don't specify anything, how would the AI know what you want? To put it simply, the term Unreal Engine that I mentioned previously is basically a modifier you could use, along with other hundreds or thousands of terms that can also determine an art style of an image, or even technical details like camera lens size, Polaroid or even camera model can change how the resulting image looks, which is fascinating. HeartMe made a really insightful blog about this and just to name a few styles, surrealism, expressionism, synthwave, vaporwave, watercolor painting, tonalism, studio Ghibli, slenderman, Jax diffusion, which is clip diffusion but we wrote with the Jax library instead of the classic torch, is another diffusion variation that's modified by Unshippered. Its difference with disco diffusion is pretty hard to tell. What's obvious though is that Jax seems to be pretty good at generating geometric or symmetrical shapes compared to others. So when you see any cool shapes like this, it's probably made from Jax. But keep in mind that Jax and Disco Diffusion is sometimes both referred to as Clip Diffusion, since they are just slightly modified and optimized versions of the original Clip Diffusion. In December of 2021, Latent Diffusion was published and later on combined with Clip once again, becoming the next generation of Diffusion models. In its intended purposes, Latent Diffusion has the ability to generate close to reality images, similar to what Dolly E can do, but it is much improved because it's open sourced as in everyone has access to it. Everyone can see the code and it's not behind a paywall or have never seen the light of the world. Even though Latent Diffusion is not completely out of the world by itself, its most recent combination with Disco Diffusion to create Centipede Diffusion is definitely something of its own. What Centipede Diffusion offers is the creativity of Disco Diffusion and the coherence and consistency of Latent Diffusion, so it is able to or at least attempt to hold together conceptual ideas or objects. Unlike Clip Diffusion that creates fuzzy or indistinguishable outlines easily. So here's a little little map I've devised to easier navigate the complex landscape of AI generative models and while I was at it, Dolly Stop E2 what you're doing said hi to the world. April 2022, Dolly E2 was something I did not anticipate. In the midst of the rise of diffusion models, it instantly stands out not because it is a project from OpenAI, but because its results were phenomenal. Quality? Perfect. Accuracy? Perfect. Realism? Perfect. It really was something I did not expect machine learning to be able to do in such a short amount of time. But exactly how? All we know is Clip and Diffusion, as they unfortunately did not reveal any further details. To put it in comparison, here is Dolly E2 and Latent Diffusion side by side. Dolly E2 outperforms in resolution, style, coherence, and creativity. A photo of Confused Grizzly Bear in Calculus class. A detailed neoclassicism painting depicting the frustration of being put on hold during a phone call olive oil and vinegar drizzled on a plate in the shape of the solar system, golden retriever riding in a hot air balloon, a cute white long hair anime fox girl in a forest. It just gets better and better and better. You can never get sick of looking at these results, and amazingly, OpenAI is also providing people with early access if you sign up right now. While there are also many others like Glide that uses classifier free guidance diffusion, CogView, which is a Chinese version of Dolly E, and Ru Dolly E, which is a Russian version of Dolly E, were nowhere near close in imitating what the original can do. And that is the peak of AI text to image generation right now. In the future, we may not need a search engine for images. We can just ask the AI to draw an arrow PNG with a transparent background without the need of downloading fake PNGs, and that would be amazing. But the AI art generation still has a contender, Mid Journey. 
Made by one of the key contributors of Disco Diffusion and many others, I feel like categorizing this and Dolly E2 together is just kind of unfair. One is more focused on realism and the other is going for the art styles. Well, that is totally my personal opinion, but text to image art generation really do give a different vibe if you just take a closer look at what it can do. Mid Journey is a private project that is currently in beta, speculated utilizing both guided and latent diffusion with clip in creating artworks. It's a very discord oriented project where you have to get invited to join its private beta and a subscription to use the AI in exchange for computational costs. I was lucky that I got to try out the AI myself, not sponsored by the way, and it was way faster than I anticipated. Modifier terms like digital painting and trending on ArtStation are especially popular to use with their service, which I also found intriguing. It's speculated that Midjourney is generating a low res image using a model that is tuned for that resolution which allows them to begin with relatively good image coherence. It then continues to diffuse at a higher resolution. Well, all models are unknown, of course. Midjourney's result really just sets itself apart from the others. It's like setting a standard in what is being called an AI art, with the wildest and the weirdest design any human and the AI can dream of. And to truly test the limit of AI generative art, I am going to host a small AI art competition starting from when this video is published. I feel like it will be fun to see AI art being generated even more seriously like for a competition and such, and inspire people to input more creativity than usual to generate their AI artwork. The deadline will be July 10th for now, with 5 categories for you to win in. As for the prize pool, I'll see if I can find any sponsors that can increase it, but right now personally I can only afford around $500 for everyone to compete. If you have any suggestions, feel free to contact me and I plan to live stream myself reviewing all the submissions and have a viewing fest with every one of you. So follow me on twitch.tv slash bycloudai and on twitter for more information and the latest updates. Day. With that being said, these amazing AIs do prompt some side effects. What does it mean for the future of artists? While I am not an artist myself, I cannot express genuinely how it will affect them, the job market, and the ecosystem of freelancing, but what I definitely know is that vector art and clip art would probably experience a saturation and slow decline in the need of actual artists when Dolly E2 or just any AI generative models mature. And you can start to see the cycle of the rich getting richer and normies getting normier. Big companies are definitely going to throw around these expensive AI models to profit off infinitely, while most of us can only sit here and watch the economy burn. Well, this is definitely just one of my hot takes for the future of AIs, and I really do hope scale is not everything, because if it is, cycles will definitely happen and we'll be the ones in trouble. And there's Flamingo, the next gen of clip made by DeepMind from Google. The accuracy in describing the image provided is absolute mental. Just wait for this to combine with Disco Diffusion and we'll probably have another AI generative toy to play with. And today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can freely explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and have fun with your creativity. And after this video, you probably will want to know more about AI and machine learning. Then I suggest this class called Artificial Intelligence for Beginners, Tools to Learn Machine Learning by Alvin Wen, which provides a very great introduction into practical machine learning. The lessons aren't that long either, so you can easily go through them during your free time. What's even better is that they are currently also providing an offer of one month free premium trial, which provides you plenty of time to go through these short lessons. And even if you're done with that class, you can also check out their other amazing ad free and high quality creative classes like photography, illustrations, and video editing. The first 1000 people to click the link in the description or use my code will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you guys for watching, I will try to include all the Google Colab notebooks where you can try running it yourself down in the description. Big shout out to Andrew and many other patrons and members that support my work through Patreon and YouTube. If you have any questions, feel free to join my Discord too. Follow my Twitter if you haven't and I'll see you in the next one.